हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर सिद्धार्थ सुराना आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग गुड और मैं तो हमेशा मस्त ही रहता हूं वेलकम टू एपिसोड नंबर एट ऑफ रिविजन कम अमेंडमेंट्स इन डायरेक्ट टैक्स फॉर मे 23 थ्री एंड नवंबर 23 थ्री एग्जाम फॉर सी फाइनल एंड ऑफकोर्स सी ए इंटरमीडिएट ऑल्सो वी हैव बिन रिवाइजिंग ऑल द कॉमन टॉपिक्स एंड फ्रॉम नाउ ऑनवर्ड्स द लास्ट टू एपिसोड दैट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव will contain all the chapters of ca intermediate because all the heads of income clubbing set of deduction your entire ntti computation is going to be a part of this we are doing these lectures in 100% english language because a huge number of students from south are also watching these lectures let's continue the next chapter in our ca final syllabus last chapter of volume 2 of the ca final book that is chapter number 32 transfer pricing whenever there is a multinational group which has operations in india and outside india so something like this if there is selling price of a product cost price is 100 and selling price is 120 in dubai to 20 rupees ke profit pe there is income tax but the company has used this idea that what we will do is we will sell it to our dubai company at cost price so selling price here will be cost price for our dubai company we will create one more company over there and thus the profit will be shifted from your to year the profit that we were earlier showing here and therefore paying tax will now be shown as here because at what price to transfer this is exclusively under our control both companies belong to us only we are the same multinational group and because this profit is being shown in dubai and there is no income tax in dubai we have ended up avoiding the tax that we would have otherwise paid in india and in order to curb such exploitation we have the chapter transfer pricing which says any income or expense so it can be a cheating related to income manipulation related to income or expense any income or expense between two associated enterprise a transaction like this is possible when both enterprises are related with each other so any income or expense between associated enterprises in an international transaction where india dubai ka example will work or it can also be for a specified domestic transaction where you have both companies in india but one in is one is in a normal area and other is in special economic zone so normal area wala company will pay tax but sez wala company will get deduction so same shifting ka manipulation can be done in such cases also and thus we will cover such transactions under specified domestic transaction any income or expense between associated enterprise between international transaction or specified domestic transaction shall be computed at arms length price shall be computed at arms length price arms length price in simple language is nothing but what price you will transact with an unrelated party some party which is at a distance from you this price will be applied to your related party transaction as well the market price is going to be taken for tax purposes you may do your transaction at whatever price you want but for tax purposes we will be taking the arms length price some points to be noted before we go to the computation part and the explanation of concepts like specified domestic transaction international transaction and all supposedly x is selling to related party at 100 rupees per unit and unrelated party at 120 rupees per unit so now that we have understood that by applying transfer pricing what we will do is this price will be applied to this transaction accordingly for tax purposes we will cancel 100 and make it 120 that means can i say the income of x will increase by 20 but y ka purchase ka deduction will not be due to transfer pricing when income of one enterprise increases the deduction of the other enterprise will not change it will remain unchanged that's the first point from the addition of 20 rupees x will not get any chapter 6a deduction or 10a so the original selling price of 100 which was shown from the original amount you can take any deduction if you are eligible but from the enhancement the transfer pricing addition the assessee will be disqualified from taking any benefit from the original amount the deduction can be taken but from the transfer pricing addition there will be no deduction that is going to be available to the assessee next if we reverse the transaction this time sale to related party is 120 and unrelated is 100 and if we apply this price here that means can i say selling price will reduce tax will reduce if transfer pricing reduces tax then transfer pricing is not applicable this is a very important point good number of questions come on this quick recap of the first three points which all three are important due to transfer pricing when in, when income of one enterprise increases the income of the other enterprise will remain unchanged second from the original amount you can take your tax benefits but from the transfer pricing addition you will not be getting any tax benefit and third if due to transfer pricing if due to transfer pricing your tax in india reduces then the provisions of transfer pricing are not going to be applicable next section 92d which says that you will have to maintain certain data document information 
in which is covered in rule 10d for non maintenance there is going to be penalty of 2% and if it is called for non furnishing kele there will be 2% penalty whatever are your transfer pricing transactions you have to get them reported ca report is compulsory form 3 ceb we also call it transfer pricing audit and failure will attract penalty of 1 lakh rupees flat if you don't maintain data document information then the assessing officer will have power to compute your arms length price if you don't maintain the data document information the ao will have the power to determine your arms length price for the purpose of computation of arms length price the assessing officer can appoint transfer pricing officer this is similar to appointment of valuation officer for valuation purposes so alp computation ke liye the ao can appoint the tpo and here he will get 12 months extra for passing the assessment order in certain cases you can opt for safe harbor rules safe harbor rules where you declare a certain percentage on your expenses as your net profit net margin and that will be accepted without any litigation fight with the assessee we also have the concept of advance pricing agreement where assessee can enter with the department an agreement in advance similar to advance ruling the agreement has to be approved by central government but this is similar to advance ruling we will compute arms length price how we will do that agreement in advance so that the litigation will be avoided this apa will be applicable for the current year and the next four years for sure that is five years ka applicability current year and next four current year and next four your alp will be computed as per the agreement which is done in advance so no party can dispute each other and litigation will be eliminated but the best part about advance pricing agreement is that you can apply it for the past four years also but for applying for the past four years this past four years may applying is optional so apa will be compulsorily be applicable for current year plus next four years but for applying them in the past four years it is optional and there are some conditions so if in any of these past years your tax liability is getting reduced or if any of the past years you have filed a belated roi or if any of your past years your case was with the itat itat becomes same as cbdt so if your case was with the itat then apa will not be applicable for that year for example in the past four years you know 1920 is coming that year if you apply apa then your tax is reducing or 1920 ka return was belated or 1920 ka case was subject matter of appeal to itat then for that one particular year that apa will not be applicable obviously apa will apply till the time the law and the facts remain same if you have taken apa by fraud or misrepresentation then the apa will become void ab initio and if there is a return which is already filed or if there is any order already passed then the return or the order will be modified and will be made in accordance with the advanced pricing agreement and of course for future years ka to return and order will be done in accordance with the apa also next is the concept of secondary adjustment if there has been a primary adjustment then it is compulsory to make secondary adjustment lol sir what is primary adjustment due to transfer pricing if there is any adjustment in entity i remember that 20 rupees that we added and it can only be added because if transfer pricing is reducing then it is not applicable so due to transfer pricing if there is any addition 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 in your computation of income taxable income as per income tax that's primary adjustment then you will have to make secondary adjustment that is adjust your books of accounts to reflect it. so income as per tax and income as per books is different transfer pricing ka addition happens in tax but books mein to sales is 100 only no the original transaction now change it in the books of accounts also so change in computation will be primary adjustment and therefore change in books of accounts will be secondary adjustment you have to do it in your own books lol you have to do it in the books of the associated enterprise also why on earth will the associated enterprise agree to do this adjustment remember that uska computation will not change the income will remain unchanged not just that we have to take that money also from the associated enterprise within 90 days from your due date of return filing which will be november so not just make the associated enterprise pass the entry but also repatriate the money from the associated enterprise and failure to repatriate will be treated as loan given to the associated enterprise it is like it's a recoverable from the associated enterprise and it will be assumed assumed that they are paying us interest and therefore we call it notional interest and this notional interest will be calculated on the amount of secondary adjustment if the transaction was in indian national rupee then sbi annual rate on first day of the previous year plus 3.25 percent per annum so if the transaction was in indian rupees and first day of the year ka sbi rate is 10% so we will take 13.25% and if the transaction was in forex so we will take 6 month libor london interbank offer rate on 30th september of the year and add 3% so supposingly 6 month libor on 30th september was 8% so we will take 
11 percent this whole section will be applicable only if the primary adjustment exceeded rupees 1 crore so we are setting the materiality limit here but most cases it is going to exceed 1 crore and if you want to avoid all that you have to avoid because it is not possible the associated enterprise is not going to modify books neither is going to pay you any money then you need to pay a one-time tax so basically they want this extra money so they created the whole drama of secondary adjustment pay one-time tax of 18 percent compulsory surcharge 12 and hec 4 this total you pay and then you don't make primary adjustment but till the time you don't make this payment till that date ka to national interest will also be calculated till that date ka national interest will also be calculated obviously if book profit under 115 jb is increased due to advanced pricing agreement or a secondary adjustment then assessing office then acc can apply to you for rectification of book profit of the past year under section 154 see if we are applying api in a past year and making the secondary adjustment then book profit has to increase so we can get it rectified we can get it rectified obviously if in the between ka period ka mat credit you have not paid next notified jurisdictional notified jurisdictional area whenever there is a territory outside india which does not cooperate with our government then our government will declare such a territory as naja notified jurisdictional area and what is the consequence all assessees in nja will be treated as associated because we don't even know who is the owner we don't have any information we will treat you only as the owner if you do any expense over there it will be disallowed except if we are allowed to do questioning without government interference for that also minimum 30 percent tds has to be deducted any money that you receive from there including like a capital receipt or a loan taken from there will also be treated as your taxable income because it is possible that your undeclared money is parked here and you are bringing it in the form of loan even if it is loan because we don't know who is the owner here we will treat it as your taxable income cypress was notified then it is now removed so i don't have it in the book also okay next section 94 b the limit on interest deduction whenever an assess in india is paying interest under pgbp an expense of business to non resident associated enterprise so pay ka definition is very clear non resident associated non resident associated non resident associated assessee in india is making payment of interest to non resident associated enterprise then that deduction will be restricted to 30% of ebitda and supposingly we are not directly making payment to our associated enterprise our associated enterprise gives any loan or guarantee to third party and from this third party we take the loan and to this third party we pay interest so we are escaping this but indirectly the money has come from year to year then year to year so such transactions will also be covered so all interest paid to non-resident associated enterprise plus all interest paid to third party which have received loan or guarantee from non-resident associated enterprise that total interest will be restricted to 30 percent of EBITDA if the interest is exceeding rupees 1 crore then if the borrower is in banking or insurance business then taking loans is a part of your business this section is not applicable and if the lender also is a permanent establishment in india of a non-resident in banking business matlab if you have taken loan from indian branch of foreign bank then also this section is not going to be applicable because it is an ordinary course of business ka transaction we have to give them immunity and don't worry whatever amount we are disallowing here you can carry forward and adjust within the limit of the section 30 percent of EBITDA carry forward it and adjust within the next eight years now that the general points are over we one by one go and learn the definition the very easy international transaction it has to be two or more associated enterprise with at least one non-resident otherwise how it will become international it can be buying selling or leasing of tangible or intangible property provision of services lending or borrowing money apportionment of cost overhead cost and any impact on your final accounts if there is at least one non-resident then it will be uh, treated as international transaction likewise what is specified domestic transaction anything covered in 10 double a because one company takes deduction other not eligible so you can manipulate any income related chapter 6 is same thing one income one business is eligible other is not eligible and any 115 bab that ridiculously low rate of tax for companies at 17.16 percent so if you have this company and if you have any other company again you will manipulate so ao has the power to recompute profits there also in mat we saw 30 percent will be applied and alternatively we can recompute the prices and compute as per the arm's length price if the total is more than 20 crore in a year arm's length price already understood unrelated party case are the transaction that we do what do you mean by associated enterprise when one enterprise participates in the capital control and management of the other enterprise then both of them will be treated as associated or when a common enterprise enterprise 3 participates in capital control management of x as well as y so a and x are related because of first point a and y are related because of first point 
X and Y that way don't have anything in common with each other. But because of this common holding of both companies, X and Y will also be treated as associated enterprise. How do we decide that when X is holding 26% or more in Y or it can be Y in X also. It is only an example. When A is holding 26% or more in X and Y, both. If X is appointing board of directors in Y, yeah, a common enterprise is appointing in both. If X has given, if one enter, X and Y are examples, one enterprise has given loan or advance of more than 51, 51% or more of the assets to the other or guarantee of 10% or more of loans or is supplying design or specification for goods or is supplying raw material or one enterprise is buying the goods manufactured by other or influencing the price for individual uska pura relative for HUF the member and relative all these or last me they say any mutual relation if the two enterprises are childhood friends the AO can declare them as associated enterprise that's how easy it is to become associated enterprise and once you are an associated enterprise how are we going to compute the arms length price for the purpose of computation of arms length price we have six methods comparable and control price method resale price method cost plus method profit split transactional net ma margin method and any other method as may be notified depending upon transaction we have explanation of all of them you can choose any method and if you have more than one alp so you will take simple average if the method that you have used is profit split or any other profit split or any other matlab method number four or six then here we will always take the simple average in these two methods we will always take the simple average profit split or any other notified me we will always take the simple average but for the remaining four remaining four consa cup method first one rpm second one cpm third one ntnm fifth one one two three five one two three five if there are six or more entries then we can't take simple average we have to follow the range concept so first let's be clear when range concept will apply in profit split and any other method even if there are 100 entries it will be simple average only for these four methods here also if it is 0 to 5 entries to simple average if it is 6 or more so what will we do range concept a range in ascending order find out the 35th and the 65th percentile means in ascending order which entry is there on the 35th place and 65th 35th means total number of entries into 35 percent and 65 percent that will be the range if the number comes as a decimal then we take the next entry we all know this 35 percentage total number of entries ka 35 percentage comes as decimal for next entry same we do for 65 and if total number of entries ka 35 or 65 can, comes as a whole number so we take the answer at that amount and the answer at the next entry and we take the simple average for example if the number of entries are 7 so 35th and 65th percentile on 7 both come as decimal so we will take the next entry number and choose the range ka start and end but if the total number of entries are 100 then 35th percentile is the entry number 35 65th percentile is the entry number 65 they are whole numbers so what we will do is entry number 35 and entry number 36 ka simple average will be our start of range and entry number 65 and 66 ka simple average will be end of range if if it's a whole number then simple average of that entry and next entry into the data set and if not whole number then very next entry is the answer if your transaction that you have done is within this range of 35th and 65th percentile then your entry can be taken as arms length price and if not then you have to take median median means exact middle wala answer if it is odd number again so you know you do 50th percentile it will come as decimal so you take the next number that will be the middle most entry and if it is even number so you will take half no then you will not be in the exact center so even number may what you will do same thing 50th percentile will come as a whole number so that answer and next answer ka simple average that is how the range concept is going to work and now finally the methods are explained most logical method comparable and control price method when you are selling to related at 10 rupees but unrelated to uh, 100 110 and 120 so what we will do is we will take simple average because there are only three entries six hota to simple average nahi hota then we would have taken range concept but if there is any additional cost any difference to that we will eliminate they have to be comparable so if there is any difference in this transaction and these transactions first remove and after removing take simple average when you don't sell to unrelated party but your associated enterprise is further selling the same goods then you take the resale price ka simple average and subtract profit margin that your associated enterprise has charged so you can automatically get your cost and that is your arm's length price cost plus ke andar what you do Take your cost and add your profit margin. So you get the selling price which will become your arm's length price. Profit split may you will take your cost and add profit percentage of this industry because unfortunately it is possible that this industry does not have any margin. Transactional net margin method may what we will do is 
every transaction one by one when there are multiple associated enterprise the value chain is going from year to year so every transaction ka we will find out margin and we will find out the selling price of the previous person according to this margin the net margin will be calculated at every transaction that is how tnmm will work and that's the last method because any other notified may you don't have to do anything that was the revision of our chapter transfer pricing let's go ahead we are now going to enter volume 3 of our syllabus first chapter being the first head of income under income tax that is income from salary final year students may not take it as seriously but of course intermediate students will have to take it seriously and these are common lectures so at least final year students also if this is serving as a revision for you anything that you can take home yaar mil raha hai to le lo na people you know you are getting knowledge and you are getting it you know on a social media platform to make most of it okay aur isi baat pe like thok dijiye thok dijiye like thok dijiye thok dijiye like thok dijiye okay to coming to the point first head of income income from salary only the head of income is called salary anything given whether wages gratuity share of profit leave and cashment if the payer is employer and payee is employee if the payer is employer employee employer giving to employee to irrespective of name it will be taxable in salary the essence of taxing any income under the air salary will be employer employee relationship irrespective of the name of the payment it has to be the relation relation between employer and employee and accordingly firm paying salary is taxable under pjbp to the partner within 40b limits of course correct or no so employer paying will be taxable as salary if there is any salary foregone by you bola nahi chahiye but still it is going to be taxable only salary surrendered to the government you don't have to pay tax but only to the government any voluntary payment by the employer whether contractual or voluntary everything is going to be taxable but if firm is paying then it will be taxable under pjbp for the partner bolo bhai are employer employee relationship salary is taxable on due basis or receipt basis due or receipt whichever is earlier due or receipt whichever is earlier due hua receive nahi hua taxable receive hua due nahi hua taxable salary is taxable when it is due or receive whichever is earlier an employee primarily pays the salary to his employer which is obviously taxable but over and above salary every employer pays some monetary benefits to his employee and some non monetary benefit to its employee the monetary benefits are called allowances and the non monetary benefits are called perquisites the monetary benefits are called allowances and the non monetary benefits are called perquisites when the boss gives you money take this money pay rent of your house take this money bring tiffin to office take this money it will help you to travel take this money it will help you to do something in your life then it is called allowance there will be amount received from that certain sometimes there is some exemption given the balance will be taxable this will go in your entity act and when the boss provides you non monetary benefit take this key go stay in that house take this key drive that car non monetary benefit so we will find out how much of that portion is taxable and add the taxable part in the salary idea is to compute your net taxable salary so in the monetary part from the received amount we subtract the exempt amount we get taxable and in the non monetary part we directly compute the taxable part and both these taxable components the taxable taxable part will be added in your taxable income from salary so how do we compute we start with basic salary first allowance for increase in cost of living dearness allowance it may be fixed from the beginning that is in terms it may be changing or contingent or given later that is not in terms observe carefully total is going in the outer column means there is no exemption from dearness allowance dearness allowance is fully taxable but other than that there will be some allowances which will be received this will be given in the question you have to compute the amount exempt under section 10 and accordingly you will find out the amount which is taxable likewise some perquisite valuations you will learn and you will get the taxable perquisite this will give you your gross salary from which we get deductions in the old regime now everything will fall in place standard deduction the actual salary year or 50000 whichever is lower entertainment allowance ka deduction only for government to so, dekho entertainment allowance will come here first of all because it is an allowance here there will be nothing exempt whether government or non government it will fully come here because we are not giving any exemption we are giving the deduction and the deduction will be only for government employees 5000 rupees actual amount received or 20% of basic salary whichever is lowest only for government employee the non government ke liye fully taxable and if you are paying any professional tax to the state government so whether you are government or non government employee payment basis because pay is government so standard deduction 
एंटरटेनमेंट अलाउंस फॉर गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉइज एंड प्रोफेशनल टैक्स ओनली इफ पेड ये तीन डिडक्शन देखिए यू गेट योर नेट टैक्सेबल सैलरी अलावेंसेस कैन बी नाउ वी हैव टू लर्न टू पार्ट्स ऑफ द चैप्टर अलावेंसेस एंड परक्विजिट्स अलावेंसेस कैन बी सम व्हिच आर फुल्ली टैक्सेबल देखो वेयर एवर देयर इज एन एग्जेम्पशन गिवन देयर इज एन एग्जेम्पशन गिवन वेयर एवर देयर इज नो एग्जेम्पशन गिवन इट इज फुल्ली टैक्सेबल फॉर एग्जांपल डियरनेस अलावेंस में नो एग्जेम्पशन गिवन एंटरटेनमेंट अलावेंस आल्सो देयर इज नो एग्जेम्पशन गिवन देयर इज अ डिडक्शन ओनली फॉर गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉइज any overtime allowance no exemption given if you get medical allowance monthly fixed then it is allowance if you get reimbursement of actual expense no it will become perquisite city compensatory allowance any roti kapda makan chaddi banyan allowance anything where there is no exemption it is fully taxable some allowances mein there are exemption given for example house rent allowance mein there is an exemption given some special allowances mein 10 14 mein there are some exemptions given and then there are some allowances which are fully exempt absolutely fully exam so as and when we learn the computation of exemptions we will get to know which are fully exempt let's start these are all section 10 ka provisions they are all under the exempt income wala part leave travel concession any amount received towards travel to any place in india during employment or after termination of service the boss will give you travel ka money from that money you will spend something so the amount received or amount spent or year there is a third amount given in rules amount received from boss amounts spent by you or the amount given in rules whichever is lowest will be allowed as a deduction for example if you travel by air then economy class ticket from origin to destination or amount spent or obviously it cannot exceed the amount received you may be spending more from your own pocket but it cannot exceed the actual amount whichever is lowest if you travel by rail then first class ac fare or amount spent whichever is lower but of course also the actual amount you have to take it cannot be more than the actual in case of any other mode of transport the origin and destination are connected by rail or air then we take the same thing ac first class fare and not connected by this thing then we will take uh, if there is a distance of this much between any two places then how much is the rail fare wherever there is a recognized public transport to uska first class fare we will take and whenever there is no recognized public transport we will see between origin and destination ac first class rail fare kitna lagta hai that amount or amount spent or amount received whichever is lowest this exemption can be taken two for two journeys in a block of four calendar years not financial years but four calendar years mein you can take the exemption dekho boss can give you ltc 100 times but exemption you can take only twice in a block of four calendar years so sometimes it is possible that one calendar year is spread over two financial year yeah one financial year has got two calendar years you can do some manipulation if it is possible out here in calendar year twice in a block of four years and if you were not able to utilize this to any one can be carried forward to the next block but you have to avail in the first year of the next block any one can be availed any one can be availed and that has to be taken so next block mein kya hoga first year mein you take one which is the broad forward concession and then during that block of four years you can take any two more this traveling expense can be incurred for yourself for your spouse for your children or your dependent parents and dependent brother sister so spouse and children can be dependent or independent but parents and siblings have to be dependent isme bhi on 1st october 98 they brought a change that your existing children will be counted as children now for new children we will keep a restriction of maximum 2 that means all children born before 1st 11098 uska ticket ka you can take children born after 11098 mein you can take only two only two so you have five before and two after you can take all seven but if you have two before and five after to before wala two you can take and after wala bhi two you can take but isme again there is a problem so before wala to all you have taken supposingly you have five or 50 before wala all children you have taken after mein you got one child till now one is allowed to you take then you go for one more child in that second birth you get twins or triplets ab that is not under your control to so second birth ka if it is multiple birth to all will be covered to so before wala to in any number of children will be covered after wale mein first child is covered second child mein if there is multiple birth to all the children will be covered third will not be covered and first mein if it is multiple birth to you already know no that you have two children then don't go for the second child so if the second birth is a multiple birth then all the children will be covered next calculation of gratuity good work ke liye extra payment if you are getting during service so it will be fully taxable whether government or non government at retirement you are getting government employee ke liye fully exempt non government employee ke liye we will check if you are covered under poga or not covered under poga covered under poga ke liye the exemption will be lowest of amount actually received 20 lakh rupees maximum notified over lifetime 
और 15 बाई ट्वेंटी सिक्स इंटू लास्ट ड्रॉन सैलरी इंटू कंप्लीटेड इयर ऑफ सर्विस और पार्ट एक्सीडिंग सिक्स मंथ थर्टी सेवन ईयर एंड एट मंथ यू टेक थर्टी एट मंथ फिफ्टीन बाई ट्वेंटी सिक्स दैट विल बी ट्रीटेड एज हाफ मंथ सैलरी कंसिडरिंग फोर ईयर फोर डेज पर मंथ का लीव लास्ट ड्रॉन में वी विल टेक वी विल नॉट डू एनी एवरेज अंडर पोगा बिकॉज दिस इज पोगा कैलकुलेशन एंड इन दैट वी विल टेक सैलरी प्लस डी ए बोथ डी ए अंडर पोगा वी टेक बोथ डी ए वेदर इन टर्म्स और Not in terms and those employees which are not covered under POGA, we take the calculation as per income tax. First two points are the same only. Maximum notify twenty lakh actual receipt. Year half means half. We will not take fifteen by twenty six. Then in taking the number of years, we will ignore in part. So thirty seven years and eleven months also will be taken as thirty seven. And while taking salary also, we will take basic plus DA in terms plus fixed percentage commission for turnover. Well, the DA not in terms will be excluded. and this salary will be average of the last 10 months before the month of retirement so if you retire in january we will take the last 10 months ending on december if you retire on february last 10 months ending on january wo total period ka basic da in terms and fixed percentage commission divided by 10 that average salary into half into number of years ignoring part that salary will be taken for this purpose that third amount will be computed like that so this calculation is as per poga this is as per not under poga so as per income tax next pension after retirement when you get anything it is going to be called pension if you are taking monthly monthly periodic periodic then it is going to be fully taxable but if you are taking lump sum commuting it so for government employees they take but to enjoy life to fully exempt for non government employees we will go and check if you have received gratuity you are in a good position so we will take one third of commuted value and if you have not received gratuity so we will take half of your commuted value and what is commuted value if you go for 100% commuting then how much you get If you commute hundred percent, then how much you get? That is going to be called commuted value. Uska one third or half, and you can read through these examples for better understanding purposes. Next, leave and cashment. Once again, during service will be fully taxable. At retirement, government employee born to take maja of life, so fully exempt. Other employees ke liye we take lowest of year. There is three lakh maximum notified actual amount. Ten month average salary. Before the date of retirement, so here if you retire on 15 January, your 10 months will end on 14th January. Average salary of last 10 months, so we take 10 months' ka basic DA in terms and percentage commission divided by 10. That's the average salary. Us average salary ko we multiply by 10, so we get the third limit. And us average salary ko we take balance leave as per income tax, so we get the fourth limit. How to compute balance leave as per income tax? Over your working life, whatever is the leave available to you, due leave. जिसमें वॉट एवर योर बॉस गिव यू फॉर टैक्स पर्पज वी विल टेक मैक्सिम वन मंथ पर ईयर वन मंथ पर ईयर एंड माइनस द लीव दैट यू टेकन ड्यूरिंग योर ईयर ऑफ सर्विस तो ड्यू लीव में मैक्सिम वन मंथ पर ईयर माइनस वॉट एवर यू हैव टेकन दैट बैलेंस लीव इन टू द सेम एवरेज सैलरी दैट यू हैव कंप्यूटेड अब आउट ऑफ दी फोर विच एवर इज लोएस्ट विल बिकम योर एक्सेंशन रिट्रेंचमेंट कॉम्पेंसेशन इफ यू आर रिमूव फ्रॉम योर जॉब यू विल बी गेटिंग दिस अंडर द इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट एक्ट अमाउंट एक्चुअली रिसीव नोटिफाइड ईयर इज फाइव लैक एंड दिस कैलकुलेशन इज सेम एस Poga 15 by 26 last drawn basic and dia completed year of service or part exceeding six month voluntary retirement from service when you get payment for VRS you retire before time again actual receive your maximum notified also is five lakh three into salary per month into number of number of years of service and the same salary per month into balance months for superannuation you are retiring before age so how many months were remaining for your normal retirement age which if not given we take six years. If you retire at the age of fifty-five, so five into twelve, sixty months remaining. And if the company ka policy is fifty-eight given to you, so we take three into twelve balance months for superannuation. And your salary will again be basic plus DN terms plus fixed percentage, but last drawn. But for this exemption, there are some conditions. Condition one: employee must have completed at least forty years ka age or ten years ka service. Any one of them. This VRS should be for all employees, excluding the directors of the. Company. The purpose of this scheme should be reduce the total number of employees. You can't appoint new people in that place. You should not be appointing new people. That is again confirmed out here. And the retiring employee should not be joining any other company under the same management. And just to add one more thing, this exemption is once in a lifetime. VRS ka exemption you can't take again and again. Then other exemptions may if we have this 10, 14 transport allowances may. Only for handicapped employee. Earlier there was one thousand six hundred for normal employee and handicapped ka three thousand two hundred. Now only handicapped ke liye actual or thirty two hundred per month. This is maximum obviously, whichever is lowest. Children education allowance me maximum hundred rupees per month. Actual or hundred whichever is lowest. That also only for two children. Hostel expenditure me actual or three hundred whichever is lower, but maximum 
two children. Tribal area allowance may actual or 200, whichever is lower. And for allowances like two travel transfer, conveyance, helper, academic pursuit, whatever you spend for your purposes, office purposes, spend for office purposes, that expenditure will be exempt. And if you pocketed any amount, so that pocketed amount is going to be taxable. Next is the treatment of provident fund where employer contributes, employee contributes, interest is paid and then maturity is also received. Statutory provident fund for government employees, they enjoy life. Private sector may we have recognized and unrecognized and for non-employees, those who are professionals like me, so there is public provident fund. Employer contribution, government may exempt. URPF may right now it is exempt but maturity pay we will tax it and RPF may 12% of salary, basic DN terms and percentage commission, actual or 12% of salary, whichever is lower, will be exempt, excess over 12% will be taxable and for PPF of course there is no employee. Your own contribution, when you put money, that can be for non-employees also, so SPF and PPF to deduction will take, RPF also they have taken approval to deduction, only in unrecognized there will be no deduction. When interest is credited in the fund, so statutory provident fund and public provident fund it will be exempt. URPF may right now it is exempt because this and this both will be taxable at maturity and RPF may up to 9.5 exempt excess over 9.5 will be taxable and finally when you receive lump sum on maturity statutory exempt public provident fund exempt here also it is exempt subject to the conditions that we saw in TDS ka chapter also if you complete minimum five years or transfer balance or any other reasonable cause or employer ka business has stopped so subject to those conditions it is exempt otherwise if you withdraw before five years it will be taxable and here employee ka contribution exempt because you have not taken ATC but the interest that you have received on that contribution will be IFOS and employer ka contribution plus uska interest both will be taxable under salary next how is rent allowance when boss gives you money to pay rent of your house the list of the following actual HRA received with the money you will be paying rent, so rent paid minus 10% of salary, VOI basic plus DN terms plus fixed percentage commission. And for metro cities, 50% of salary, non metro cities, 40% of salary, same salary, whichever is lowest is going to be exempt. And the salary will be taken for the period for which you have taken the house on rent. So you get HRA and you pay rent. So whichever period ka you paid rent, only that period ka salary you will be taking. If there is any change in particulars like your house has changed or your salary has changed or your HRA received has changed, so you will have to do monthly calculation and if it remains same throughout the year, then you can do annual calculation also. When employer contributes to superannuation fund, the amount in excess of 150,000 will be taxable and the employee ka contribution will be deduction under ATC, interest is going to be exempt. RPF may notified pension scheme which comes in chapter 6 also and superannuation may total mila ke the benefit cannot exceed 7,50,000. Is ke upar in the additional question bank that I have given for CA intermediate after our class questions get over, you will get one question that you can solve and you will understand how to calculate that excess over 7,50,000. Next, we go to the perquisites. Perquisites are non monetary over and above salary and are going to be taxable. The general rule is boss will pay a third party. That is why you will get the benefit. No, Boss will pay a landlord. Then you will get house ka ki. Boss will take a car on rent. Then you will get the car ka ki. So boss ka expense is your savings. That's your perquisite. But from that, if there is any official expense, that is not your perquisite. That company is getting benefit. And anything that boss is recovering from you is also paid from your pocket. So that also is not your perquisite. Anything paid by boss and you are taking benefit. So subtract official expense, subtract the amount recovered. That will give you your taxable Perquisite. The various perquisites may the biggest are your loan wala, house wala, motor car wala. First, rent free accommodation if provided to government employee, then according to license fee rules of government, provided to non government employee and it is owned by the employer. So, we will go by the city ka population. If the population is up to 10 lakh, then 7.5% of salary, between 10 and 25, then 10% of salary, more than 25, then 15% of salary. And if the accommodation is taken on rent by the employer, then the amount of rent paid by the employer or 15% of salary, whichever is lowest, this is how we will value your perquisite, the taxable amount. If it is unfurnished house, then if the boss is giving you furniture, purchase furniture, 10% per annum on cost, and agar hired furniture, to higher charges. And from this, if the boss is recovering anything, it is concessional interest, so we subtract the amount recover the market value will always be irrelevant salary will include everything your bonus overtime commission blah 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 everything only the following will not be included what da not in terms so da only in terms will be included if there is any deduction we will subtract that from the salary and take that deduction the employer ka contribution to rpf in excess of 12 percent and interest in excess of 9.5 which comes in the taxable salary but for this perquisite we will 
not take it. Perquisites other than this perquisite will not be taken and period for which the house was provided. This is how we will value the salary to apply this 7 and a half, 10 or 15 percent of salary. If the boss is giving you hotel accommodation, then amount paid or 24 percent of salary, whichever is lower. Hotel accommodation provides more facility. So instead of 15, we take 24 percent. But if hotel accommodation is provided for less than 15 days for transfer rela related reason, then it is going to be exempt for transfer then it is going to be exempt rent free accommodation provided to high court supreme court ka judge officer of parliament union minister leader of opposition is going to be exempt next perquisite when the boss gives you interest free loan or concessional interest loan if he gives for medical purpose then it will be exempt and if the loan amount is up to 20000 then it will be exempt so loan perquisite will be taxable only if it is more than 20 non medical more than 20 non medical okay how will you value the perquisite the interest that you have saved so we will do month by month calculation so at one time we will take only one month us month ka last date ka balance we will take outstanding balance on the last day and maximum balance so if there is any repayment on the last day morning may it was 10 lakh ka loan afternoon may you repay 4 lakh so evening may it was 6 lakh so we take the maximum during the day maximum was 10 lakh maximum was 10 lakh or you may put it this way the repayment on last day of the month will be ignore so last day ka repayment ignore karke whatever is the balance that will be principal we will take it month by month so we always multiply by 1 by 12 and the rate of interest will be sbi rate on the first day of the year sbi rate on the first day of the year that is for interest free loan if the boss is charging anything we subtract that so we get concessional interest loan in part two supposingly you get a medical loan so that is not a perquisite that we have already seen but if you get mediclaim ka reimbursement then you have to give it back to your boss if you don't give it then your perquisite will start getting tax for example loan taken was 5 lakh not a perquisite repaid till now 1 lakh 50 still not a perquisite because it was a medical loan 350 ka balance hai us time pe suddenly you get medical insurance ka money it can be 3 lakh or 4 lakh if you get 3 lakh you repay 3 lakh you can't repay 350 because you got only 3 lakh and if you get 4 lakh then you repay only 350 because baki ka you have already replay, repaid correct or no so your duty to repay is whichever is lowest and if you don't repay this money if you don't repay this money then the perquisite will now getting will start getting tax for the claim month we will take the whichever is lowest wala amount rate will be same this will be monthly and for future months same as what we have done in part one next perquisite medical facility when the boss is providing you for family family ka definition is same as ltc self spouse children parents and siblings only if dependent if he is paying for family then you get some benefit but if he is paying for other than family then it is going to be fully taxable for family if the expense is in india which is in a hospital maintained by employer or government hospital or recommended hospital or approved hospital then it is going to be fully exempt and at other places it is going to be fully taxable and if the treatment is given outside india so we will take treatment ke liye amount that will be exempt will be the amount as permitted by rbi for outside india for stay we will take exempt up to the amount approved by RBI and stay has to be for the patient plus one person and for outside India if there is travel so again we will take exempt up to amount permitted by RBI but only if the GTI before travel is up to rupees 2 lakh only if the GTI before travel is up to rupees 2 lakh then only it is going to be exempt then only it is going to be exempt other points already seen fixed medical allowance will be fully taxable but if the boss is giving you any personal accident policy or staff group insurance or medical insurance all this is going to be exempt and further there is an amendment in this chapter that any expense with respect to covid related illness if you have incurred expense and your boss is giving you reimbursement you incurred treatment of covid ka expense for self or family and boss is reimbursing that money then that is going to be exempt that is the amendment that has taken place and the last big perquisite motor car perquisite what are the possibilities car and expense both are given by employer car is of employer but you are incurring expense so only this much is the perquisite car is yours only he is giving expense so only this much is perquisite and both are yours then there is no perquisite obviously okay if boss is giving car as well as expense that means all expenses are incurred by him only if boss is giving you both then also you will have to go and check purpose if the purpose is only for official then you are not getting any benefit so no perquisite if it is only personal then everything is your benefit so for car we will take 10% per annum of cost if purchased or if the boss has taken on rent then higher charges plus all the actual expense because everything is your benefit and his total may say if you have paid anything any amount recovered that will be taxable and if it is for mixed purpose 
so we will have to go notional basis on the cubic capacity if the cubic capacity is up to 1.6 liters that is less than or equal to 1600 cc then the rule is different and greater than 1.6 liter the rule is different for car plus expense we will take 1800 and 2400 respectively and if driver is provided only for 900 the perquisite value will be only rupees 900 only for the driver so with the driver it will be this amount the taxable value of the perquisite without any recovery nothing this is the final answer into number of months the car was provided next if boss is giving car only car because this time expense you are incurring that means he is not providing any perquisite for expense only car will be taken again official me to zero hi rahega. but for car we will take the same amount expenses have gone away that's the only change expenses have gone away minus the amount that is going to be recovered and partly official partly personal me car hai expenses to gone so car ka amount will reduce from 1800 2400 to 600 and 900 and if car ke saath driver is given nothing else like fuel bagheera is not given only driver is given so driver ka cost is going to remain the same 900 and 900 finally if boss is not giving car only the expense it is your own car so car ka value will be go away and expense ka value will come again wholly official though there is no perquisite personal mein car ka amount has gone only expenses we are taking total mein there is any amount recovered so we will subtract and partly official partly personal hua to same cc mein this time what we will take we will take his total expense like we are doing here and we will subtract the official expense on notional basis here the personal part was given in notional basis but here the official is given on notional basis for small car 1800 2400 for big car and driver kelly again 900 900 is total mein se we will subtract recovery dekho here we are taking actual and subtracting no so we are subtracting recovery here we are directly taking notional so recovery will not be subtracted if it is only official perquisite we have taken nil but there is condition certificate from employer and all details have to be maintained and notional values may be if you want to offer a lower amount same to condition you can take maximum one car in partly more than one car like sop you have only two here also more than one car will go in only personal now we go to other small perquisites if there is any movable asset sold by the employer at a concessional price so we will first find out the value on the date of transfer by taking original cost and depreciation for the years and minus the amount recovered how will we find out the value for computers and electronic item cost on the acquisition minus 50 percent wdv so we will charge depreciation for motor car ke liye original cost minus 20 percent wdv and for other assets ke liye original cost minus 10 percent slm over the years this will give value on the date of transfer is a minus the amount recovered that will give us the purchase value any free or subsidized meal so whatever boss has paid minus 50 rupees per meal will be exempt and amount recovered will be exempt that means up to 50 it will be exempt and during working hours if you are getting snacks and non-alcoholic beverages during office hours like tea coffee etc exempt and which employer gives alcoholic beverages during working hours which employer if you know any employer who gives alcoholic beverages during working hours so i will give my resume Who so snacks and non-alcoholic beverages during working hours is going to be exempt okay gift may if it is a gift in cash so in excess of 5000 is taxable or uh, if it is in gift in cash so it is going to be taxable however if the aggregate value is up to rupees 5000 then it is going to be exempt perquisite of movable asset given for use so assets like computer laptop mobile will not be taxable because they are only given for use ownership is not transferred but other assets like furniture etc given on use so 10 percent per annum of original cost you are rented at the higher charges and amount recovered that will be subtracted this is how we will value our small perquisites and that's our chapter salary ka division moving on next chapter second head of income income from house property they call it house property but cover all properties residential or commercial like salary there is only one condition employer employee relationship here the main 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 condition is to tax any income under section 22 the main condition is that first there has to be a property first there has to be a property there has to be a building it can include land or exclude land but first there has to be a building so only if there is a vacant land only and only if if there is only a vacant land then it is not going to be covered there has to be a building assessee has to be the legal the deemed owner he can be actual owner or deemed owner because subletting will be taxable under ifos and this assets this asset this property should not be used part time for the purpose of business or profession income from vacant land aya to it will be taxable regularly hai to pgbp otherwise ifos but definitely not house property there has to be a building you have to be the owner and not used for business the income that you earn is rent but you pay tax on the capacity and the capacity is called annual value which is why we divide properties into two three three types self occupied property owned resident throughout the year to uska capacity will be taken as zero we don't want to tax but 
in that category we can take maximum two properties we cannot take more than two if you give on rent even for one day even for one day then it will be treated as let out property because for sop it has to be full day but you can take maximum two after two it has to be deemed to be let out whether you give it on rent or you don't give it on rent the market rental income of that property is going to be taxable and even if the property is held in stock and trade so if developers are not selling within the time limit so up to two years from the end of the year of receiving completion certificate of that property we will not apply dlop but after two years we will start applying dlop provision to stock in trade also stock in trade also rent from property will always be taxed under income from house property even if you are doing it as a regular activity or even if you are letting out your stock in trade till the time it does not get sold however for ca final students only there is supreme court ka judgment chennai properties and investment where it was held that if you create a company only for renting purposes there is no other activity no other objective then you can classify rental income also under business profession if you are getting rent of house with other assets composite rent if it's one fixed amount and you cannot segregate so you can't put it under house property put it under pgbp or ifos but if you can segregate then house car rent will go in house and other assets will go in ifos or pgbp how to compute start with gav municipal tax is only if paid and paid by the assessee only if paid and paid by landlord so we get nav nav me se two deduction standard deduction flat 30 and interest expense accordingly we will get our income from house property in gav computation first start with municipal valuation value according to local authority fair rent the normal capacity both will be given expected rent will be a or b whichever is higher standard rent in some selected states of the country if it is there it will be given if applicable otherwise we continue with expected rent and then we get our alv rlv annual letting value or reasonable letting value which is going to be expected rent or standard rent whichever is lower and if there is no standard rent directly or expected rent now you go and check this is the value according to income tax now go and check what is your actual rent received actual that will also be given and if there is some unrealized rent subject to certain conditions what condition tenancy was bona fide defaulting tenant has vacated the property does not occupy any other property you take legal action against him subject to these conditions you can subtract unrealized rent and take actual rent received and if you don't fulfill these conditions then actual rent receivable but this is actual rent ka step received or receivable based on condition finally alv or actual whichever is higher alv or actual whichever is higher alv or actual whichever is higher is your answer but sometimes there can be vacancy which is why your actual is lower so it is inappropriate to compare your actual with the alv which is a 12 month ka figure so only for comparison purpose only for comparison we will add in the actual rent year we will add vacancy period ka rent in the actual rent we will add vacancy period ka rent we will compare these two but answer will be between these two if e is greater that means assess e is a manipulator and e only will be your answer but if e is less than g that means assess e ka actual is lower because of vacancy if e is lower g is higher then f will become your answer answer will be e or f e or f g is being done only for comparison if e is greater e is the answer if g is greater f is your answer if g is greater than f is your going to be your answer that is how we will compute gav and vacancy period when we are adding that means only that period for which the property was locked unoccupied unoccupied so if there is some period for which you occupied the property that will not be treated counted or included in the vacancy step number 2 municipal tax is only if paid and paid by the landlord so if unpaid hai ya tenant has paid to no deduction and if it is given in percentage then don't apply on gav apply on municipal valuation nav is very simple gav minus municipal taxes for sop but only two houses more than two will become dlop for sop we will take nav equal to zero standard deduction will be flat 30% of nav and it will cover all expenses no separate deduction only municipal tax is given here and interest is given all everything else will get covered under standard deduction interest ka deduction will be allowed if you have acquired the property with borrowed money you have to be the owner so acquisition ka cost hoga borrowing cost deduction will be on due basis so municipal tax is on payment basis but interest on due basis but only simple interest compound interest will not be allowed if you pay outside india to a non resident so tds is applicable otherwise interest obviously fully disallowed tds ka chapter also we know the loan should be taken very important point for purchase construction repair renewal reconstruction purchase construction repair renewal reconstruction then only the deduction will be allowed otherwise the deduction will not allowed if you have taken one loan for an eligible purpose for repaying that loan you take another loan or a top up loan or something like that then in that case your deduction is going to be allowed in case of lop dlop because there is income offered to tax there is no limit unlimited actual interest fully allowed actual interest fully allowed 
But in SOP, you are not showing any income, only taking deduction. So, we restrict it to 30,000 per SSA. However, there are three conditions you fulfill and the limit will become 2 lakh. Deduction is limit. If your actual interest is 80, normally you get 30 ka deduction. But conditions fulfill to 80 ka because limit is changing. So, actual or 30 whichever is lower, actual or 2 lakh whichever is lower. Correct? Hai? But when will your limit become 2 lakh? Loan taken on or after 1 4 1999. For purchase or construction, other three purpose may it will be 30 only. And completed within 5 years from the end of the year of loan, then the limit will be 2 lakh in SOP, 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 LOP, DLOP, it will be unlimited. Other points, if the property is self-occupied for part of a year, let out for the remaining part, one day also let out LOP. When there are multiple owners of a property, co-owners of a property, so what we will do, compute the income of the property and divide the income in the ratio of ownership. If there is any pre-construction interest, matlab you have taken a loan, but property is not yet ready. So that period ka loan, the pre-construction interest, it is not going to be allowed in this year because there is no building. And later you, when the property is ready, then you will get only current year. So what we will do, pre-construction interest will be divided by 5 over 5 years after your construction completion. Matlab this year and 4 more years. In whichever year your computation starts, that plus 4, 5 years tak, you can take current year interest plus 1 fifth of pre-construction. Current year plus one fifth of pre construction. That total, of course, SOP hoga to limited and LOP hoga to unlimited. One fifth of total from five years starting from completion date. But for LOP, DLOP, it is going to be current year plus pre construction. And for SOP, it will be restricted to the limit. How will you compute the pre construction interest? Principal and rate will be given. Period kaise loge? The date of loan will be the start date of the period. And end date will be either you repay the loan or 31st March before completion. Whatever date you complete your construction, that year ka you are going to get, no, uske pehle ka 31st March is going to be taken. And next concept, recovery of unrealized. Anything which is uh, unrealized, right now you subtract, but future may you can recover. No? So taxable in the year of recovery, even if you have sold in between, that ownership wala condition is not necessary in the current year. Past ownership is also allowed, but you get flat 30% deduction. So any recovery, flat 30%. Deduction. That was our last concept and that's our chapter, income from house property. Now we move to the, I think this will be the last chapter for the day, but watch it till the end because one of the most important, the most important, whether inter or final, the most important chapter, of course, some sections are removed from inter ka syllabus, but whatever is there, you revise and final case students, ke liye to, again, it is going to be very, very important. PUBG nahi, PUBG, PUBG, PGBP, profits and gains from business, that is sale of goods or services. The net profit, that is all expenses will be allowed. Income tax is about taxing net income. So, net profit after all expenses will be taxable. How will we compute? Start with net profit as per PNL. Any expense wrongly debited, debited but disallowed. So, add it back. Income which is taxable but you have not created. So, mistakes of accounts we are correcting. Likewise, if there is an expense which is allowed but not debited or any any income which you have credited but it is not taxable. So, subtract all this and you are going to get your taxable PGBP. I have, you know, for explanation purposes written some steps for doing it. So, this we do a lot of hard work on this in our normal lectures. You can go through these steps from the, I strongly recommend to, you know, you all should before I started the revision session, I already announced that it is necessary that you have this handwritten book and you can now observe the kind of effort that has been put in order to create uh, this. It requires a lot of creativity, give some respect to the creativity more than anything else. So like, talk, dije, talk, dije, like, talk, dije, talk, dije. comment, kar dije. that must the creativity, kya must the hai re baba. So, motivation aega na for doing summer like this or hum final mein hai. abhi humko aapka kya jarurat now why should we motivate you na laiko but there will be other people no and now in mumbai to i am doing 11 standard to ca final ka coaching matlab the moment you come out of 10 standard from 11th commerce to ca final i am handling every everything then the best faculties best the most important asset in coaching is the faculty best faculties ke saath mein i am doing it for more details you can message me abhi point ye hai that any of your junior your younger sibling your children tomorrow because some may be you know having children and still giving ca very normal in ca so for them 11th to ca final and i will be personally responsible and involved in their day to day guidance and this is also one of the reasons why i stopped traveling 
आउटसाइड मुंबई आफ्टर एक्सपायरी ऑफ माई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एवरी वेर तो एटलीस्ट दोज हुर इन मुंबई इनफैक्ट वी हैव ऑनलाइन लाइव ऑल्सो बट एटलीस्ट दोज हुर इन मुंबई फ्रॉम इलेवेंथ टू सी ए फाइनल कैन स्टे इन टच विथ मी कैन स्टे इन कॉन्टेक्ट विथ Me now we talk about the allowed expenses which are given from 30 to 37. One rent, trade, taxes, repairs and insurance, premium of building. Only one condition used for business or profession. Repairs and insurance of plant and machinery and furniture again used for business or profession. Depreciation got two condition owned, used, owned, used. But owned will include higher purchase. Used will include passive use that is kept ready for use. Whether tangible or intangible, sub pay you will get. But depreciation on land, no. No depreciation on land. No depreciation on cars imported before two thousand and one. If you are making payment of more than ten thousand, then it has to be in the three allowable modes. Otherwise, just like revenue expenditure, you lose depreciation also on your capital expenditure. Depreciation ka deduction is compulsory. You don't have the option of not taking depreciation has to be calculated on block asset. Block asset. Any asset purchased during the year and used for less than one eighty days, whether normal depreciation or additional depreciation, we restrict it to. Half amalgamation, of course, has taken place. So between the predecessor and the successor in the ratio of number of days. Then, if the S C is engaged in any manufacture or distribution of power and has acquired new, so manufacturer new and only on plant and machinery. Manufacturer new plant and machinery. Manufacturer new plant and machinery. Subject to cases that some assets are not eligible, like ships and aircraft, second hand plant and machinery, any office. अप्लायसेज और ऑफिस के अंदर इंस्टॉल किया हुआ या हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ कॉस्ट इज अलाउड एज अ डिडक्शन इन साइंटिफिक रिसर्च और एनी अदर सेक्शन दो आर इन एलिजिबल तो इफेक्टिवली मैन्युफेक्चर प्लांट एंड मशीनरी न्यू एलिजिबल मैन्युफेक्चर प्लांट एंड मशीनरी न्यू एलिजिबल देन ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ कॉस्ट विल ऑल्सो भी अलाउड एज डिडक्शन ओवर एंड अब द नॉर्मल डेप्रिसिएशन नॉर्मल विल भी ऑन ब्लॉक बट ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ कॉस्ट विल भी अलाउड एज अ डिडक्शन एंड ऑफ कॉर्स परचेज ड्यूरिंग द इयर एंड यूज फॉर लेस देन वन एटी डेज तो हाफ हो जाएगा टेन परसेंट बट द रिमेनिंग हाफ विल भी अलाउड इन द very next year even if it is not the year of acquisition or installation okay actual cost kaise loge all expenses incurred before using the asset for the first time any interest capitalized before using the asset for the first time minus any grant or subsidy received this is the cost that will be added in the block also the cost on which you get additional depreciation only power generation and distribution on their tangible power generation tangible have the option which once taken cannot be changed have the option of taking depreciation on slm basis very easy every year there is going to be your fixed amount of depreciation but if you sell your asset if the selling price is less than the value so the difference will be the remaining depreciation deduction we call it terminal depreciation that is one concept if the selling price is higher the difference up to original cost is going to be your balancing charge matlab taxable under pgbp and if the difference is more matlab you get more than your original cost then pgbp me only that original difference will go the excess over original cost will go in capital gain as you are aware this is also summarized out your block asset method once you mix in the block no identity of the asset khoon me tere mitti mitti me tera khoon khoon me tere mitti mitti me tera khoon upar ambar niche dharti beech me tera jinu re sultan or this is for modern days good old timers are aware of this movie of good actor great actor nana patekar he mixed hindu blood and muslim blood on one palm he said ab bata isme hindu ka kaun sa musliman ka kaun sa sale banane wale ne ko farak nahi kiya tu kaun hota farak karne wala same is the case of block asset matter when the blood mixes you cannot identify when the asset mixes not the blood when the asset mixes you cannot identify under this method similar asset will be merged to form a block and depreciation will be calculated not on an individual asset but on the value of the block how will we compute opening wdv asset purchased during the year sold during the year will be subtracted add purchases minus sales qualifying amount will be computed at the year end so full year ka purchase is add full year ka sales subtract irrespective of order in which you do transaction it will always be opening plus purchase minus sale and iske upar based on the rates the blocks are already given in income tax rules on those rates you will have to charge depreciation and find out the wdv at the end of the year individual asset will have no identity in the block so individual asset ke upar there will never be any capital gain or loss it will be adjusted in the amount of depreciation so if you have quantity and amount positive quantity positive amount no need to calculate any gain or loss it will be adjusted in the amount of depreciation but if the sale consideration is higher than the value in the block then it is becoming negative so you have to compute gain it's a case of gain because sales is higher minus the value in the block the opening plus purchases will become your cost of acquisition and that will give you your short term capital gain and if all assets are sold everything is sold it can be higher price or lower price but then you don't have any 
asset left no then that will result in a case of short term capital loss so some assets sold at higher price will result in gain because amount is going away all assets sold whether higher price or lower price it can be gain as well as loss depending upon higher price or lower price the exams the examples are given out here and last year an amendment took place supreme court ka judgment was overruled if there is any goodwill in your block so there will be no depreciation in fact if it is already included so take the original cost of goodwill some years ago keep on subtracting depreciation assuming it was the only asset find out the present value of that goodwill and subtract that goodwill ka amount from the block and find out the fresh value of the block in order to compute depreciation and obviously the amount cannot be more than the value in the block the reduction cannot exceed the wdv in the block and now these example these sections are removed from inter ka syllabus but final maybe they are not very important t coffee and rubber business amount deposited in a special account with nabard within 6 months from the end of the year or before the due date of return filing whichever is earlier then actual amount deposited or 40% of profits whichever is lower will be allowed as a deduction books of accounts audit karana padega on or before the 44 ab due date likewise if you are in site restoration business so again you have to deposit the money in that special account uh, on or before the end of the year uh, actual amount deposited or 20% of profits from the business whichever is lower and other conditions are same expenditure on scientific research 3511 revenue expenditure for own business current year plus last 3 years 100% deduction 352 capital expenditure for own business current year plus last 3 years 100% deduction but if you take this then depreciation etc you will not get and these two are the only two that are allowed in new regime also the remaining part is not allowed in new regime only own business ka deduction will be allowed but of course land ka deduction is not going to be allowed then if you have given any perquisite to employees in your pre commencement period dekho waise we are giving you know pre commencement ka deduction for 3 years but during that period if you provided any perquisite to employees and the perquisite ka deduction is not going to be available to you pre commencement period mein any perquisite ka deduction is not going to be available to you then 3512 and 3513 any contribution for association uh, uh, college university if it is scientific research then it is 3512 and social science to 3513 everything is 100% only so that way it is very easy indian company who has done in house research and development ka expenditure to 100% deduction of capital or revenue but of course land and building ka you can't get but building ke liye you can take that own business wala deduction and if you have made contribution to such indian company who is doing in house research and development to apne contribution ke liye bhi you will get 100% company can't take 352ab but company can take wo 3511 and 352 ka deduction 351 and 2 ka deduction these research associations have to file a statement giving particulars of donors so that ais may we can put it and of course penalty and fees we have already studied in the past chapters finally if you contribute to national laboratory iit etc for approved scientific research so we are going to give you 100% deduction but if the approval is cancelled after contribution that is not your problem you will still get your deduction next 35 abb and 35 aba ab b is telecom license ka expense in spectrum fees is given in aba cost of the spectrum or license divided by balance life balance life kyu because we don't give you deduction from directly the first year of validity from when you make payment from that year you are going to as you pay payment basis pe you get deduction because the pay is government so if you made payment in installments so i have given an example on the basis of this example as you make payment you keep on taking deduction and obviously depreciation etc will not be given because you are already taking this deduction one of the most important sections for ca final as well as inter if you are doing this 14 specified business the government is desperate if ye business karna please 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 ye business karna aao deduction lo aao deduction lo aao deduction lo aao deduction lo 35 ad to so 14 specified businesses mein you will get 100% deduction of capital expenditure points to be noted before we go to which are those businesses pre commencement expenses also allowed if you capitalize in the books of accounts if you claim this then there is no other deduction but this is optional so if you don't take 35 ad so you can take your other deduction like depreciation land goodwill financial instrument ke liye you will not be getting deduction business should not be from ye pura scz ka same no splitting up and reconstruction of existing business and second and local plant and machinery maximum 20% of total plant and machinery if there is any loss it can be adjusted only against profit of specified business वैसे profit पे there is no such restriction loss carry forward only if you file return on time unlimited carry forward will be given same business पे you can take specified business 35 AD or 10 double any one same assessee for different businesses can take the asset for which this deduction is claimed should not be transferred to any other business for eight years or if you do that then the deduction that you take minus the depreciation foregone over the years will be added in your PGBP 
Books of accounts have to be audited. CA report is compulsory. And what are the specified businesses? Warehousing of agricultural produce, cold chain facility, production of fertilizer, hospital, but minimum 100 bed for patient, affordable housing, slum redevelopment, inland container depot, container feed station, beekeeping, honey making, warehousing of sugar, laying and operating cross country petroleum and natural gas pipeline, but this is only for Indian company, hotel of two star and above facility, a slurry pipeline for transportation of iron ore, semiconductor wafer fabrication unit and again only for Indian company, new infrastructure facility, if you develop it or if you operate and maintain it or if you do both, but what is infrastructure? A road including toll road, bridge or rail system like metro monorail, highway project including housing and other activities, water treatment, water management, irrigation, solid waste management, sewerage system, any port, airport, inland port, inland waterway, anything navigational channel in the sea, then this is going to be a new infrastructure facility. You develop it or you maintain it or you do both, you will be eligible for 35 AD ka deduction. Payment for rural development or urban poverty eradication, 100% deduction. Expenditure on agriculture extension, 100% deduction, whether capital or revenue. Expenditure by this is only for company on skill development that also excluding land and building, 100% deduction. These two are not allowed in new regime. But 115 BAC mein they are only mentioning this because this is not applicable only no. 115 BAB mein they are mentioning both because this is applicable only to company. So be careful 35 CCC available to all assesses in old regime. 35 CCD available only to company in old regime. New regime mein they are both not going to be available. Preliminary expenses like market survey, legal charges and all. For non-corporate assesses the, uh, the qualifying amount is very simple. Actual expense or 5% of cost of project the assets that you have purchased for your new business. For corporate assessee, we will take 5% of whichever is higher, cost of project or capital employed. Cost of project or capital employed ke higher ka 5% or actual expense whichever is lower and in capital employed, Supreme Court has decided that securities premium will not be included. So, 5% of cost of project or capital employed, Deko either to it will be only cost of project, either it will be whichever is higher or actual preliminary expenses, whichever is lower will be qualifying amount and uska one fifth over a period of 5 years will be your deduction. Expenses on amalgamation and demerger, one-fifth over a period of five years. Any expense where you have paid VRS to your employees, one-fifth over a period of five years, but only on payment basis. One-one line call deduction in section 36, insurance premium of your stock in trade, insurance premium paid by a milk society for life of cattle, insurance premium paid by employer bonus and commission to employees, but 43B is applicable, so payment basis, interest on loan borrowed and used for business, loan borrowed and used for business is going to be allowed as a deduction subject to conditions obviously that TDS you have to deduct if it is for acquiring an asset so before using you have to capitalize all that you have to take any discount that you are giving as a company you are issuing zero coupon bond so that difference which you are bearing for pro rata basis pay, you will be allowed as a deduction as an employer if you are contributing to RPF or superannuation fund yeah as an employer you are contributing to poverty fund up to 10% of salary contribution to approved gratuity fund in your business if you have used animals by purchasing them. Now you are writing off means you are selling the animal or you are selling the dead body of the animal. So that difference. Bad debts in a business provided this was earlier declared as income. Earlier you have declared as income. So bad debts, actual bad debts, only actual, actual, actual bad debts are allowed as a deduction. RDD provision normally is not allowed, normally is not allowed, but for banking businesses. So foreign bank may up to 5% of GTI, public financial institution up to 5% of GTI and you schedule bank, non schedule bank, cooperative bank mein, we take 8.5% of GTI plus 10% of rural advances, 8.5% of GTI plus 10% of rural advances and NBFC may be 5% of total income. Ye hai only in the banking business RDD, otherwise other businesses only actual bad debts will be allowed. Expenditure on family planning, this is allowed only for company first of all, mention this only for company. If it is revenue expense fully allowed, capital expense one fifth over a period of five years for stt ctt paid in business it is allowed in capital gain it is not allowed stt ctt only if paid in business sugar can purchase by cooperative society and mark to market losses as per icds will be allowed general deduction any expense not covered in the previous section only for business not personal not capital not an offense prohibited by law not for csr will be allowed like purchases salary to staff all these general day to day expenses will be allowed and there is a small little amendment that these prohibited expenses matlab illegal expenses will be any violation of any law in India or outside India. It need not be only Indian penal code or something. Any violation of any law, a CA accepting commission or a doctor accepting commission, to payer ke liye also that expense will be disallowed. Now we go to the disallowances of the chapter. Any contribution to political party will be disallowed, but 
चैप्टर सिक्स में यू कैन टेक हंड्रेड परसेंट डिडक्शन इफ इट इज नॉन कैश इफ बिल्डिंग प्लांट एंड मशीनरी एंड फर्नीचर इज यूज फॉर बिजनेस एंड पर्सनल बोथ कॉम्बो पर्पसेज तो प्रपोर्शनेट पर्सनल कॉम्पोनेंट विल बी डिस अलाउड 40 small MA multiple parts are there. Part one me all direct taxes, including surcharge and cess. Then foreign country ka tax, buyback tax, interest on income tax, all that in fact penalty etc. Everything is going to be penalty. So वैसे भी 37 to be illegal expense me it is going to be disallowed. Direct taxes are not expenses; they are appropriation. So disallowed. When a state government undertaking pays any license fee, royalty service fee, privilege fee to the state government, it will be disallowed. And TDS ka if the TDS is not deducted. और डिडक्टेड बट नॉट डिपॉजिटेड अप टू 139 ड्यू डेट तो रेसिडेंट पे इसके लिए 30 परसेंट नॉन रेसिडेंट पे इसके लिए 100 परसेंट इज गोइंग टू बी डिसउड बट इन फ्यूचर यार इफ पेड तो द डिसउड अमाउंट नाउ विल बी अलाउड लेटर 40 बी रेम्यूनरेशन एंड इंटरेस्ट का लिमिट दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन इन द पार्टनरशिप का चैप्टर तो यू कैन रिवाइज फ्रॉम देयर बट व्हेन एओपी बीओआई पेस एनीथिंग टू इट्स मेंबर इट इज गोइंग टू बी डिसउड एओपी बीओआई के लिए फुल्ली डिसउड इफ यू मेक एक्सेसिव पेमेंट टू योर रिलेटेड पार्टीज देन योर एक्सेस इज गोइंग टू बी disallowed cash payment made same person same day otherwise then the three allowable modes cash payment made more than 10000 is going to be disallowed fully disallowed but normal limit is 10000 if you are making payment to transporter to the limit will be 35000 normal is 10 transporter ke liye limit is 35000 but there are some exceptions to this rule matlab same person same day but still it will be allowed even if it is more than the limit for example if banks are closed or payment is made in a village where there is no bank or employees on a temporary posting payment you only have made payment to bank or payment to government or payment through bank but other than the three allowable modes intermediary was bank only but other than the allowable <coughs> modes payment by any book entry payment made to a farmer payment made to cottage industry where goods are manufactured without the aid of power payment of terminal benefit like retrenchment compensation anything up to 50000 rupees payment to an agent who is made to make payment in cash ya payment for purchase of foreign currency in normal course of business these are some exceptions which are going to be allowed whatever you have to learn wo normal full course ke lectures mein i have already mentioned contribution to employee benefit funds if approved to it will be allowed but on basis of payment 43b is applicable and unapproved to disallow hota hai but if paid allowed to effectively if paid allowed if unpaid disallowed bas approved ke liye payment ke liye we get time up to due date of return because it is covered in 43 B. Coming to 43B, certain expenses will be allowed. Even if you follow accrual, it will be allowed only on payment, 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 payment basis. मतलब ये one paid, तो disallowed. But payment can be made up to due date of return filing. Need not be up to 31st of March. Any indirect taxes? Direct taxes are anyways disallowed. Indirect taxes will be allowed only on payment basis. Employer contribution to approved employee benefit funds. ये approved वाला funds only on payment basis. But employee contribution has to be deposited before the fund due date. Employer contribution के लिए 139 बने. If employee के payment में से you are deducting something like his provision of ये professional tax or anything या उसका gratuity contribution या employee का RPF contribution you deduct and pay that has to be made up to the fund due date उसके लिए you don't get return filing का due date bonus and commission again payment basis के ऊपर salary के लिए there is no such rule but bonus commission employees का agent का नहीं agent का unpaid also allowed but employees का bonus and commission interest payable to public financial institution scheduled bank or cooperative bank that also only on payment basis and conversion of unpaid interest into any loan or debenture is not going to be accepted loan ka to conversion not accepted only debenture mein convert kiya to in a case law it was held as allowed but they have amended the law said that is also this is also an amendment a conversion of unpaid interest into debentures will be disallowed into loan it was never allowed into debentures in a case law it was allowed but now they have amended and said that will also not be allowed leave encashment to employees only if paid and payment for usage of railway asset only if paid and paid will not be allowed and this payment can be made during the current year or in a future year then current year may disallowed to future year may in whichever year you make payment in that year it is going to be allowed next now that computation part is over general rules and regulation maintenance of books of accounts if you are in specified profession rules will be different other business profession rule will be different for specified profession we will see turnover of last 3 years if all 3 exceed 150 so you will have to maintain wohi cash book journal ledger एक्सपेंस का ओरिजिनल बिल सेल्स का डुप्लीकेट बिल एंड फॉर प्रैक्टिसिंग डॉक्टर केस रजिस्टर डेली का केस पेपर्स एंड मेडिसिन का स्टॉक दिस मच हैज टू बी मेंटेन इफ ऑल एक्सीड वन लैक फिफ्टी थाउजेंड बट इफ दे डोंट एक्सीड वन लैक फिफ्टी थाउजेंड देन एनी बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट दैन हेल्प यू टू कंप्लीट योर इनकम एंड फॉर अदर बिजनेस प्रोफेशन अदर देन स्पेसिफाइड प्रोफेशन विच एनी बडी डज नॉट फॉलो इन स्पेसिफाइड प्रोफेशन डज नॉट फॉलो इन रूल सिक्स एफ देन वी हैव टू चेक द टर्न ओवर एज वेल एज प्रॉफिट 
for turnover we will apply 2 lakh 25 lakh ka limit and for profit we will apply 2 lakh 50 thousand ka limit so 3 years ka turnover we will check and 3 years ka profit we will check for turnover we will apply 25 lakh ka limit for profit we will apply 2 lakh 50 ka limit and out of the 6 figures any one is also exceeding the limit then maintain any books of account that help you to compute income and if all are below the limits all are below the limit none of them the limit is exceeded though ja simran ja ji le apne zindagi no need to maintain any books of accounts next 44 ab 44 ab your books of accounts will be audited by a ca holding certificate of practice for people in profession if your turnover exceeds 50 lakh then audit is compulsory in business the normal remit is 1 crore 1 crore 1 crore 1 crore 1 crore only if you opt for 44 ad there it is 2 crore ka limit so you don't maintain books of accounts and take presumptive then we will not apply audit after 1 crore matlab those who don't opt for 44 ad after 1 crore audit is compulsory those who opt for 44 ad then up to 2 crore you will not have books of accounts then audit will not be compulsory only if you opt to so after 1 crore if you want to escape audit then you have to take presumptive if you don't take presumptive then audit will become compulsory but to curb cash in the economy if all your receipts and payments both may maximum 5 percent are done in cash mode matlab receipts in cash as well as payments in cash both do not exceed 5 percent receipts in cash are up to 5 percent of total receipts and payments in cash are up to 5 percent of total payment both have to be within 5 percent receipt is 6 payment is 4 not accepted payment is 6 receipt is 4 not accepted receipt also within 5 percent in cash and payment also within 5 percent in cash then seedha 10 crore ke baad tax audit will be applicable 10 crore tak no need to get a tax audit done and here if the check is other than account pay check like a bearer check or a cross check it will be counted as a cash receipt so that total has to be within the 5 percent limit presumptive taxation where you can offer an estimated income to tax 44 ad 8 percent 8 percent 8 percent 8 percent is the answer 6 is applicable only on the turnover that is realized in the three allowable modes account pay check account pay draft electronic mode and that also up to due date of return filing so cash 8 percent outstanding on due date 8 percent only realized in the three allowable modes we will apply 6 percent 8 and 6 will coexist divide your turnover into two parts realized in allowable modes up to due date and other other may include cash yeah outstanding everything only if your turnover is up to rupees 2 crore only for resident individual resident HUF resident firm and one difference between firm and LLP that LLP does not get presumptive specified profession disqualified because they have 44 ADA transporter has 44 A and people in commission agency and brokerage also business also disqualified it is obviously optional presumptive cannot be compulsory if opted then no need to maintain any books of account assessee can offer higher amount to tax but if you want to offer lower amount then books of accounts you have to maintain if you take presumptive there will be no adjustment of pgbp chapter only brought forward business loss can be adjusted uad also cannot be adjusted because uad also falls in this range no adjustment in this range brought forward loss is section 72 no? so that can be adjusted but uad is 32 to 2 so that will not be adjusted while you are not getting any deduction you still have to calculate wdv of all blocks for capital gain purposes and for future years presumptive wala only last payment of advance tax we are all aware and if you take presumptive once the minimum five more years if you opt out then not available for five more years that's 44 ad ka presumptive taxation how does 44 ada change this is only for resident individual and firm excluding llp individual and firm excluding llp earlier all residents were allowed but last year there was an amendment resident individual resident matlab in fact hf is also not eligible resident individual resident firm excluding llp that also only specified profession ca cs liar doctor engineer architect gross receipt has to be up to 50 lakh rupees so ad may it is 2 crore and here it is 50 lakh your receipts ka 50 percent will be your estimated profit so 20 lakh ka turnover 10 lakh is income 16 lakh ka turnover 8 lakh is your income and all other conditions are same so optional hai offer higher amount lower ke liye books of accounts no adjustment but broad forward loss will be the uh, no adjustment but broad forward loss will be adjusted wdv you have to calculate last installment of advanced taxes for ada ada ADA, ADA. only this five years ka five years ka compulsion is not applicable on condition 11 is not going to be applicable all other conditions are going to be same and if we talk about 44 ae which is only for transporter if you have up to 10 trucks throughout the year not exceeding 10 trucks throughout the year so we will calculate for light vehicles matlab up to 12000 kgs up to 12 metric tons 
7500 पर मंथ पर पार्ट एंड फॉर हेवी ट्रक्स 1000 पर टन पर मंथ सो 18 टन है तो पर मंथ 18000 बट 16 टन है तो पर मंथ 16000 एंड दिस वी विल डू फॉर एवरी ट्रक लाइट में वेदर इट इज 2 टन 10 टन और 11 टन 7000 500 on the basis of ownership not on the basis of usage for whatever period assessi was the owner whether you use or you don't use the income will be calculated all other conditions are same so optional if opted then no books of accounts then if not opted then maintain books of accounts everything but one difference is that if it is a partnership firm here you will get 44 40b ka interest and remuneration ka deduction so calculate this income subtract 40b deduction that's your pgbp in the other two sections you don't get that benefit all other conditions are same but two points are not applicable which two points here last installment nahi all installments of advance tax will apply point number 10 is not applicable so all installments and five year ka compulsion is not there otherwise all points are same only last two points are not applicable and now we go to presumptive taxation for non residents which is of course only a part of final ca ka syllabus 44b non resident in shipping business and part of international tax also and 44bba non resident engaged in airlines business take your turnover turnover ke upar 7.5% is the taxable income for shipping business turnover ke upar 5% is the taxable income for airline business turnover into this percentage will become your pgbp what will you take in turnover if the money is received in india then it will be included irrespective of origin or destination or if the origin is india then so money received in india or origin in india money received in india or origin in india destination is irrelevant and any one of them happens so it will be included in the turnover and any incidental charges like handling detention damage all kind of charges will be included in turnover us turnover ka 7 and a half or 5 for shipping and airline business respectively will become your taxable profits and gains of business or profession and the last two the incomes here one non resident engaged in extraction and exploration activities they are non residents you are taking turn key services for civil construction both cases may take turnover and apply yahan pe it is 10% for both 10% 10% 10% is going to be your pgbp 10% is going to be your pgbp so that's our chapter pgbp ka revision so we have done a good number of chapters in today's session thank you for your patience mostly the next well lecture will be the last lecture watch till the end like took the like thank you so much for watching have a nice day thank you very much bye bye